this is IBM Museum. I've left out the PS2 Model 53 SLC2 um, just because I went through and wanted to cover installing that CH Products uh, game card and going through a joystick calibration. Um, I do have the joystick right there. I have to hide my picture just for a moment. And um, I'm going through this fresh. Um, I haven't gone through and um, um, done any of the steps so far. We're just going to go through just like it were um, a new thing. I'll, I have the diskette, and I have, at least I have the reference diskette for the MOL 53 SLC2. And we'll just see how it goes. The Novell Netware 3.12, I mean, that is the installed um, interface on the system. Uh, it does have a DOS partition, of course, um, that is kind of small. Um, I'm going to see what I can do. I don't want to really load anything, any files permanently, but there is a little bit of a, an installation routine that's there. I may have to go through and um, have the system boot from the, um, the hard drive just to get over to that, uh, that DOS partition. Um, I'm not really wanting to modify the network installation just yet as well. And if it just happens to, uh, to take it, I mean, I'll go through and pause at the appropriate points. Um, what I'd like to do is just ultimately get, um, I, I mean, I do have the, the uh, SIT diskette that's bootable. I uh, probably need to get out a few other diskettes um, for a live stream that I have planned tomorrow in the morning here. And I'm looking at 10 a.m. local time probably is when I'll kick it off. Um, which is ultimately 5 p.m. Um, GMT time. And, um, you know, based over in Great Britain, I may get the ability for um, some European participants. We'll just have to kind of see. That's why I went a little bit earlier. Uh, that is noon Eastern Standard Time. It would be 11 a.m. Central Time and then 9 a.m. California time, or the West Coast. <laughs> I don't just want to say California. Oregon, Washington State as well. Do have some, uh, some viewers in those areas. So hopefully that's not too early for them to participate as well, but we'll just have to kind of see, play it by ear. Um, with that, I mean, I'll, I'll need the diskettes at that point. Um, I'm gonna try and go through at least on this mall behind me, uh, maybe more to extract the um, the ROM BIOS image on this system. And I want to do that live. I don't want to go through and pull the chip and try and read it and everything else. I think I could, I figured out that, that uh, the BIOS chip is incompatible with that anyway, uh, with my EEPROM reader. It does fantastic things otherwise. But um, to do that aspect, um, you know, read it through a debug script with the system powered on. And so I'll have to get that going as well. Um, you know, most most conducive from um, having those diskettes available and able to do that. I'll have to come up with a bootable diskette that I've got debug on it um, because debug is probably not in the DOS installation here. And that might be one thing I check tonight too. But um, but I'd like to get that joystick test program ultimately just on a, a diskette. Maybe we can work with the DOS partition a little bit too, if it wants to, um, and go through that calibration routine just to see what how that presents itself on the screen. Um, so let's get um, turned around for one, and I'll go through and power up the system. Um, and probably, of course, I should boot from the reference diskette. We'll go through the point of, um, uh, I'll, I'll insert the adapter before we also power up. I do have, um, in fact, let's see how that kind of plays out. Uh, I know this is kind of, the webcam is kind of a, a lateral view. I think the camcorder just gives me a little bit better overview. And it actually allows me to move the the um, webcam out of the way, just to get it off over the side. 
and we'll need the keyboard at one point. But I can go through with this view and at least I can see what I'm doing on the screen as well. We have all the, the box and all the diskette and everything else that'll come up for time. We can also use that adapter because this is a 55SX style case uh, with that port A of this game adapter the top one uh, being very close to the edge of the, the bracket here. So um, this has a lockout in one location. And it looks like this middle slot, at least, doesn't have the plastic. Um, because these systems, I mean, are new. This may have never had an adapter, despite the, um, the network installation. They, or they may have had... a who knows, the Ethernet adapter in the center location. That's what we're going to choose in this instance. Back that thumbnail screw out a little bit more. And so, you know, we're putting together ultimately uh, new parts on a microchannel system in the year 2021. That this um, adapter for everything I know has not been used before. Okay, now, now we get it seated. And that thumb screw and get the back of the bus connection. It looked like it was out of position for a little bit. Um, I'll go through after I get it set up on the, the um, use the correct drive. Remember, it's that little go to get drive I have on top here and let's get this powered up this is also nice I've got the um, I've got the remote here and I can easily flip between the the two sources of the of the camcorder and the the system and I think I've still got that aligned, at least in the correct position. Uh, one, six, five. I wonder if we're going to get configuration errors again. Okay, or the, I mean, hopefully that's um, for the adapter that we added. I hope the battery's still running good on this. So here's the... Splash screen in the reference get adapter configuration error. Um, we're actually going to go through for no for the um, automatically configure. Just to get in. Um, and that's interesting for the, um, this must be a flash uh, BIOS effectively. Um And let's kind of peek at the, um, you know, even the console for this. Okay, and still holding current time and everything. Um, let's go down to the um, more utilities. And this had that BIOS revision one. Okay, and we get all the BIOS part numbers. IML image name. System error log empty. Standalone utility information. Okay, on the diagnostic diskette. So I'll have to have, would have to have the uh, the um,
I would have to have the um, the diagnostic diskette for this and wow even gives uh, serial number system board FRU manufacturing ID 623 I don't know if that means the plant or something else. But anyway, enough kind of looking through. That. And we might even see if that that number three, I'll look through that tomorrow when I talk about the BIOS um, code. Let's uh, see what that does for a um, a a backup of the of the bios from that that might be an interesting process to kind of check out and so i'm going through and putting the original you know the the diskette that i had with the um with the game card And I've read this diskette prior. Okay. So I just didn't have it quite in there or something else. Okay. Reference diskette. Okay. Enter. Okay. So we're gonna go through, let's um, view the configuration. Okay. It supports, you know, having even that second diskette drive. Um, having that, that IDE drive there, empty. So there's the slot two, um, the CH Products Game Card 3 automatic slash MCA game port adapter. Okay, let's look at on oh, this is just viewing. So if we do So if we do a um, programming level automatic, level zero, and this should step through all that to 31. And that's that um, based on the CPU speed, you know, uh, from the page about the, uh, the um, game adapter. Okay, so disabled. And that IO um, 201 hex and 202 hex. So not really any choice of an IO range. If you have it disabled, what all does that do? And um, so let's go through, save the configuration. Okay, enter. Okay. And let's go through. I'm going to um, I'm going to get the uh, I don't think that that diskette with the game card is uh, is um, bootable. But let's go through, let's get booted to that uh, diskette. The, the system information told diskette, it's a bootable diskette. I've got, I even want to see what utilities I've got on it for tomorrow.
as it goes through and boots up, I'm going to go through and I'll put the, um, the, uh, oh, this is on the 53. So let's go through. I've got, um, let's go through and I'll change the, what I've got for my browser capture. Okay, let's do enter, enter. Okay, and so there's the game card. And uh, remember I said that, that um, programming level is based on the speed um, and the installation program is supposed to determine that um, as it goes through. It tests the computer speed. We're going to see how well that works um, and what it identifies this uh, 53 SLC2 as. Um, I'm going to first do a, let's do a directory of what files. So I don't have debug on here. Reg dump and dump. That's something else associated. So I'll have to get through for the BIOS um, dumping routine. I did that on the L40SX in a, in a previous video, but I'll, I, I've got those uh, files online and I'll need to, um, Okay, uh, let's do another directory of the game port adapter. Okay, so and it has a terminate and stay resident, um, and we don't have the more command on here for me to go through and to um, leave through all that readme text. Um, okay. So let's go through. I'm going to get back um, and I'd I'll probably just go through, I may go through to do the, um, the installation routine. Um, let me get where I can interact with this a little bit more again. Okay. Okay. The joystick mentioned. Okay. So let's see. I don't think, okay. Okay. And just the basics for, okay. You don't have to give the drive letter. I'm just going to go through. Let's. Um, I don't know if it'll go through for an. And again, I don't want to modify my auto exec bat. 
or anything there. Um, let's look at what the auto exec is right now anyway. Doesn't look to be much, just, um, yeah, it just runs the server command. Okay. And I don't know, even with this joystick um, or installing the programs of what um, that would do to netware. I mean, if it goes through and um, I'm just going to go through the J install. Syntax. Okay. Okay. So it must be in disk drive A. You do not have a hard drive. And that would have been the optimal thing. Um, and I may still do that. I may do a... Um, yeah, let's do that because I don't even have an auto exec dot bat. Okay, so we're going to do a J install and I'll just do to, to the um, to the boot diskette for the um, for set. Um, okay. And we're gonna say yes for that. Okay. Insert a diskette for drive B and press any key when ready. So I'm gonna insert the um, system information tool diskette. At least I've left up the, um... oh, <laughs> and I had all that. Well, I'm sorry that I had that page up. Um, so let's go through. We're going to do. Um, I'll, I'll run through that sequence again, just because. OK. And it did copy that over. And then going back to its prompting for the Okay. And then it's I believe it's given us a press any key. It's preventing us from overriding anything, which is looks to be pretty um, robust for a program. Okay, and who knows how many disk swaps that I'll end up doing for that. Okay, A. So for a diskette installation, we see a lot of disk swaps here. Okay. And the disk, uh, diskette for drive A being the uh, the game card diskette, drive B being the system information tool diskette. And I wish I'd shown, uh, you know, I may go through just to just to go through and show um, 
what it presented for guiding me through the, on this installation routine. Okay. But what I'll do is once I get it copied over, and I, I thought I'd do a control break, and I thought I'd get out, and I'd just repeat it again, but the system didn't cut through the... Um, didn't understand what I was trying to do. And we'll review later on how many diskette swaps this is because um, Okay, so that's back to the CH products. Setting is two. So it's gonna go through right through the um, the routine. Um, so let's do, getting right to it to go through for T. Oh, I guess we gotta get the uh, joystick connected, don't we? So I'm going to go through, let me get, okay, oh, and I guess I can do it by, remote rather than my source is already on my third click, and I'm putting in that that little um, adapter for the port A. Tighten down that single, what's ultimately a thumb screw in this case. I'm using my finger and index finger and thumb to, to tighten it down. And Get to the Pins are straight. But um, that going on to a um, conventional. DB15 we'll have to see if that um, because it, it acts like let me see if I can get that and if it's that tight of friction fit <laughs> and I just don't know if it's the pins in that uh, the, the connection on the joystick side the male pins maybe being bigger or the female side of that adapter being smaller. Okay. So there we have uh, values and we do have the ability Okay. 
So I'm going through, and I wish I actually had, um, I'm, I'm going through and there's alignment buttons. I can probably use the, uh, the regular webcam for that, but there's the alignment buttons um, here to get through to the centering. And if you do, like that's the side and it goes through to where, um, and that's even um, the bad thing. That's almost for that um, vertical. That's almost at the the limit of that range of that uh, adjustment. And then on the horizontal side, it's pretty good because right in the center is effectively the center. Um, and then here going through. Um, and that's interesting for the, um, for the joystick B. It's deselected. So hold the joystick in the lower right corner. Adjust each trim to get the largest number possible. If I'd actually read the text, it'd tell me, okay, to get the largest number possible. So the Y, so what I'm gonna do here first, 275 and I think it does the same thing there's 275 with that almost at the limit for the for the vertical okay for the horizontal And that's at the limits for X. So you're supposed to get the highest number and that's at the limits to the left. Maybe they go through for the, um, okay. So releasing the joystick back to its own centering position. Both of those uh, adjustments for horizontal and vertical, they're at the limits there. That did as instructed, and um, okay. So spacebar, okay. Move the joystick to center and release. Adjust each trim to center the cursor in the grid. Okay. So there's the. Um, horizontal, the vertical, I mean, it's just about effectively the same way. But I can't get the, um, that vertical is at the absolute limit and it still does not um, get in the center of the grid. Okay. And press enter to test the full range of travel. Okay. Move the joystick through the full range of travel. And going upper left, that just doesn't go. Wow. There's just not much. Uh, I'm in the upper part of that. Okay. Okay, and we have the buttons. So the trigger button here, I mean, I've got all this. This is a yoke joystick. I mean, that's, you know, designed for your, um, your airplane sort of, of 
control uh, your game's flight simulator. So trigger is button one. Okay, and button two is that leftmost button on my yoke. Oh, that's even for joystick B coming up. Okay, the side thumb button for the yoke is button B on that joystick A. And then left and right buttons there are carried over to that joystick B um, area. And I even forget the the jumpers that those jumpers may go through, and they may a they may give a little bit better um, and this just says enter to repeat the instruction steps um, and there I'm in effectively the lower right corner I mean the resistance on this fancy joystick may be a lot more than what it's expecting on the game port um, card. So this goes through and just repeats that sequence. I mean, I can do the buttons and everything else before it goes through and prompts. But I'm, I'm effectively centered um, even though I don't really have much um, range at at all here. So I'm going to do a escape to quit. I'd like to get, yeah, back to examine various programming values. Let's take a look at that. Okay. I'm at programming value is two. Move the joystick to the four limits and note the lowest, highest, and middle readings. Change the program level with the plus or minus keys. And I mean, that makes sense for X and Y. For X going far left, a bit going down to um, relatively close to zero. And up to 321 for the furthest right. My Y is what I'm more worried about for um, for the um, full up is 145. And there's just there's nothing below the mid-range to just going stake neutral to um, to the bottom. It stays at that 277. And I wonder if that, that joystick B has that 190, 191 that kind of dances around over there. Um, that it's, it, like I say, it's possible this is just so much more fancy than a, a two-button uh, joystick that, that this um, game card adapter would be <laughs> expecting. And we went through the buttons. I mean, that's all accessible here. Um, it just seems strange that that Y value is, seems to be the kind of the combined. Yeah. See there for Y. I mean, we should get... And see, that's more range of bringing it down to that adjustment to the lower limit of going up close to zero, down to the maximum of one, you know, 60, 170, 172 at that stream. Um, and you'd think that neutral or, 
would be the center of that position. But it might be time just to go through and have a just a more basic joystick to uh, try on these. Now, I don't know if, um, I guess you can go through and test um, because two is pretty low rating. I, you talked about being zero at the 4.77 megahertz for an XT and the uh, 31 being up at the upper end and being a very fast system. So there's three. And that actually seems better there. So it's maybe it's kind of good that they have those uh, the ability to set the levels, and it's just basically it's underestimating what um, the system level, the speed is at. And that seems about the same there for four. Yeah, you wonder if you'd go through and adjust that value. Um, what the um, the centering would do, if it would do a little bit better. And that joystick B value for Y seems like it uh, kind of is continuing to increase the levels. But there we've we've got you know a lot more for matching the speed of the system we've got a lot more variation there uh, escape to continue we even have a let's look at the uh, help okay called CHJ3, each time the computer is turned on, we kind of knew that. Um, instructions to run this program are placed in a file on the boot disk called autosec.bat. Measures how fast the computer operates in the game. Three automatic is programmed to so that standard 100K ohm joysticks will produce a stick centered value of 80 to 120. The joystick is not used when this measurement is made. So, so they want you to go stick neutral uh, when you run the test program, but th that stick centered value of 80 to 120 is, is very helpful. Um, if your joystick does not have a standard 100K parts, You'll get a center value outside the 80 uh, to 120 range. In that case, you may want to select a programming value different from the one calculated by CHJOY3. This is by putting the desired programming value after the name of the program and the odds that got bat. Okay. And then you may also use the CHJOY3 with that 150 switch for the automatic programming for the um, 150k parts, and I'm not aware of what this joystick if it's um, if it's a standard 100k ohm or the 150. Um, okay, we'll see the okay. So press any key. That's yeah, that's helpful for stick neutral. They're talking about that 80 to 120. And that is just not true for this. And again, it's probably that that this joystick is just a lot more advanced than what it's expecting. And it doesn't really seem that it, um, 
takes it to that 80 to 120 values going through and stepping up in speed. Actually seems like it's increasing those. And so, I mean, if you remember at boot, I didn't have the joystick attached either. So, that could probably really throw it as well. Okay, and I'm just going to go back down to, see, we do down to 1. 159. And that actually seems pretty good there. It's on the y-axis, it's down to the 113 for joystick A, whatever that <laughs> joystick B value is meaning. But yeah, the, the X and Y it puts in that Y value for joystick B just because of the system. And there is some Trying to think what even the switches here. If they lock it down. Okay, so that switch just dropped down the. Um, okay, and then that's there's a little. Uh, um, resistive wheel over on this side on the opposite side of the adjustment and that by cycling that that does that joystick B Y value so you wonder if that's in a sense kind of a throttle sort of thing a throttle wheel or something like that but because uh, controlling that and then when it's when this switches to that uh, this one of these, this leftmost bottom switch is to the right, then that doesn't have any effect on that joystick B value. And well, it's the same thing for that. It's that that right switch also controls the value and it controls the value when it's to the, to the right on it. Now that's probably confusing for you guys to see in the, tiny little webcam uh, picture. Yeah, and so I don't know how much accuracy, um, and we're just gonna select no for changing that value. You have the ability when you exit this per, uh, program to go through and have it change the auto exec bat for that um, program game card to the automatic values. And it's worth checking out to see if it gives us a different rating with, uh, see it still does that saying as two. Test your computer's joystick BIOS functions. Okay. Comparison of BIOS and direct readings. If your BIOS data does not follow the joystick's mode, then your computer BIOS is faulty. In that case, basic stick function, and they're talking about ultimately, uh, um, you know, ROM basic or GW basic, whatever basic function that you had, a uh, basic programming language. Um, and I don't think IBM's ROM basic has a stick um, command word or a function to that. Unless you use the, T, the TSR-15, and that's the terminate and stay resident. 
So the BIOS data, I mean, it does go through and it registers on the BIOS data side, even though note the numbers. So it's doing um, apparently, you know, BIOS, effective BIOS code in there to track joystick movement. Um, we want to look at the readme file, um, even how long this thing is. June the 1st, 1991, version 1 1.5. Okay. okay. Any key for the next page, hardware installation. So go see just about all the stuff that it has in the printed manual. The only decision you may need to make about the game card is if you plan to use a three axis joystick, such as the CH Project flight stick. And this is probably a comparable to the, um, the flight stick. Um, to prevent the third axis from interfering with the other joystick. And that's what we're seeing in that column, that Y axis reading in the for joystick B. Okay, you can remove the two jumpers on the card behind the connector for joystick A. So they're saying with a flight stick or whatever that you go through and remove the jumpers on the card that are towards the back of the adapter. So they're saying these jumpers here need to both be removed like so and I wonder if yeah ultimately this is just all the that printed manual and uh, put the game card in slot two. That's interesting. Pop the cover of the back of the machine and put it in a closet. <laughs> it is held on with four plastic mushroom studs. So they're talking about, and they're talking about... Uh, <laughs> So they're, they're talking about removing the back of the system. Um, these are these mushroom studs. That is the most involved um, manual I've heard about for uh, <laughs> uh, taking the, the three choices. Taking, pop the back off the machine, put it away in a closet, put the game card in slot two, which you have it in slot two. Mark the plastic that which should not be there. Take a pair of nippers and cut the plastic away. Do you, don't get chips inside the computer. Wait until August 1991 and order it standard from us. So that's, um, at least we have the later version that um, even despite all the time frame of this was um, released um, that I have that stender in place for the joystick um, A connector. So that's um, the timeline that they went through and included that at stender. And apparently with this text, you could go through and contact the company if you had got that um, prior. And uh, so waiting until August 1991, and anybody see the significance of that, that we're... Uh, we're now 30 years later after that um, extender part <laughs> expected it to be released. Um, 
Dell computer users to survive a direct hit, Dell put a steel bar in the back, which may keep keep you from connecting the B joystick connector. And they're referring, um, Dell didn't make any microchannel systems, of course. They're referring to the other adapter for the um, 8-bit or effectively ISA bus um, of that being used here. And um, to allow two joysticks to put a Y cable on the A connector. We don't sell them, but most dealers have them in stock. Fortunately, the Y cables do not allow the throttle on the flight stick to operate. Okay, we can provide the source for Y cables and joystick extension cords if your dealer cannot help you find them. So again, um, the the um, we find out all so much details in this README file. Not necessarily in the print manual, but it looks like to be mostly just a, a reprint of the um, printed manual. Programming the card. And so I want to run through the program again now that I've pulled the joist, the, uh, the jumpers. And I don't know how long. Stir the stick. <laughs> okay. So we get through a lot of the. Okay, and that, that talks about the adapter description file there. That at 63B3. Not used unless you have MCA or microchannel. Okay, that TSR program talked about if your BIOS is faulty, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and again, their support. Okay, and it takes us back. So let's go through. Let's get through the test sequence again, just to see if those two jumpers are really going to make a, uh, yeah, that, that does really good because it has now taken those, uh, and the buttons are still effectively there, but that joystick B, the flight uh, that input there and at least we get in the lower yeah we get more in the um, effective instructions there so hold the joystick in the lower right hand corner adjust each trim to get the largest numbers possible Okay, 320, and that's with the value, that's on my X value for uh, the tram control of the um, horizontal being all the way to the, to the left, my Y, Okay, and again, that's topped out at that upper extreme. So those trims are, um, okay, and press the space bar when, okay. Move the joystick to center and release. Adjust each trend to center the cursor in the grid. Okay. So that does account for, okay. So that's in the center of the grid effectively. Jumps and talks about magnified scale, I guess. 
Okay, enter. Still looks like it's jumping around a little bit, but I think we're good. It's like a, almost like a polling. Okay. And still the X and Y values being up there, up, you know, heart, uh, 138 and 158. Um, that those being, uh, they they want those in the range of 80 to 120. I'm saying enter. Okay, for full range of travel. And that's a lot better. It returns to center. But going through, we have the full range of travel for all that. So this thing looks like it's set really good now. Okay. And uh, enter just goes through and repeats the instructions. Let's go through escape. Let's go through back to um, the um, programming values. Okay, again, it's two. We go through for a I mean that still doesn't get us to the uh, the point of the um, for those X and Y values to be, to be between 80 and 120 like they're saying let's I don't think the program will go through. Um, I don't think it'll come up with any new number other than two. It seems like that that just sets two. Um, but I like that where I pulling those jumpers for the flight stick. I should have been paying attention to reading the the manual a little bit more for that um, seems more it, it's appropriate to go through with the so-called flight stick controllers um, to remove those jumpers so Q for back to quit Wow a nice little uh, okay Okay, and I mean, I, I wish I could go through and show, um, I did first that J install program, and that's what it gave me. That's what, when I had the web page kind of hiding that stuff. When I did the, um, and I tried to get out of the, the badge file, but I got to the prompts there, and it shows me the correct thing for the J install whether if you have a hard drive or a um, diskette drive. And um, I mean, I could go through, the only thing it modify is the, um, is the uh, auto exec bat on that hard drive that I didn't, I don't necessarily want to do. But if we do the J install, and I guess J being for joystick. And um, let's do it C this time. Because we went through for all the diskette swaps before. Uh, this is going to be a quicker process. I'm just going to tell it no for automatically modifying the um, auto exec dot bat. And... Um, It should put the files on the hard drive, the same files that we saw. Um, okay, no changes were made to the object bat file not found. I mean, there's the auto exec dot bat on the uh, hard drive. Was it on the? Um, uh, 
And what's going to be interesting here, I think I have matched versions of the DOS stuff. Um... Okay, and still with the, um, that still might be some, okay, so it comes to that same menu, just like we saw in the diskette transfer, um, we're going to do the Q for quit, I wanted to show that transfer process of how, how it did that J install. Um, and getting over to the C. So it put that, um, I created that, that joystick directory. And of course it probably didn't put anything in it. It looks like, um, the auto exec still has that just that server command in there. So, um, and it wouldn't have modified. It didn't prompt me for any installation path or anything like that. It's not smart enough to do that. Um, so effectively, uh, empty directory. We're just going to go through and I'm going to remove that joystick directory. I thought that if the installation program had been advanced enough, uh, it'd have been nice just to stick it off in this own little directory that I could go through. Uh, but it didn't modify anything to the Novell network, um, at least. And um, on my Okay, so it put the chjoy3exe on there. Um, and then it added an auto exec dot bat for me on the diskette. And that's interesting that that's the same 8 byte length of the, what I have on the hard drive. But in this case, it's just the, um, and there's probably like a line feed in there, which is interpreted as two characters. Um, ultimately, to make server and that chjoy3 the same 8-byte length, even though it's effectively uh, six bytes of both of those uh, commands for chjoy3 and server are just uh, six bytes long. Um so I've got an auto exec bat. If I'd go through and I'd use this to scan in another system, I, I'd want to go through and remark that out or have it to where it doesn't uh, uh, run that program. Uh, but that was handy um, to, uh, to, to see. How that installation program and joystick program uh, were to be and um, so probably still long and drawn out enough <laughs> another video over an hour I don't intend these things to be this long and I uh, got some grief uh, Major Tom told me that um, he's just kidding around he's saying you know you're long hour-long videos when you say that they're going to be short so that's um without further ado um that is a good place to end let's go back to our camcorder view showing that we got that uh game card installed in there and uh tested our our big uh, joystick um, 
and I just had to where, and of course I hid the webcam, had my uh, um, I hope it came out good on video because uh, my uh, OBS uh, just kind of gave me a little swirl as I tried to hide the uh, internal webcam to show the uh, to show the joystick back behind my picture, but if you enjoyed this video, click on that like button and subscribe to my channel. If you have not already, please, I would love to have more subscribers, so recommend it to your friends as well. But that's all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.